Okay, welcome to the internet. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. It's a great privilege to be a heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. Uh, God didn't have to do that. He did it by grace. And we as grace believers sometimes take it for granted of being saved and live our life. But we are God's people. And we're supposed to read the Old Testament and have patience and learning from it and watch what happened to God's first people that he chose of what they didn't or did do. And we can learn from it. But then we have the Apostle Paul that gives us 13 letters that tells us what we should do or shouldn't do as grace believers. And people most of the time do not put that into effect. But I uh, sometimes get tired of being a black sheep because of what I believe and stand for. And it would be easier not to and... I'd get to partake in a lot of other things and participate, but um, I would rather answer there than enjoy here. Um, if I ever get to the point that I believe in Christmas, shoot me. I mean it. Just, just put me out of my misery because I'm in misery by then. Uh, and I'll tell you why. And I'm going through some things that are secret, it appears, because the mystery of iniquity does work. 2 Corinthians 6, our apostle wrote this. He is quoting from Old Testament scriptures. Verse 13, 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteous with unrighteous? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord of Christ with Belial? Or what part of he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, not things, the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. <clears throat> now, that must have meaning if Paul... Is taking quotes from the Old Testament and applying it to the Corinthians in the Corinthian letter. Turn back to 1 Corinthians 6. Most people are ignorant to what we're going to talk about, and ignorance is not bliss. 1 Corinthians 6 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? It is referred to as a vessel in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own, for you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, back in, I want you to turn to Jeremiah 44. And no, that's not where you thought it was. Uh, Back in where it said touch not, the word touch not means embrace. So it's something that people embrace to be right or good or usually it's a heart feeling. Okay? Jeremiah 44, verse 13. For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by famine, and by the pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah, which are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain, that they should return into the land of Judah to, to which they have a desire to return to dwell there, for none shall return but such as shall escape. <clears throat> the God of this world knows what God likes and what he doesn't like. And the thing that he does is try to make the people of God do something to make God mad at them. Thank God we're in grace. Okay? Now read uh, in verse 15. 
Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelled in the land of Egypt, in Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, And Jeremiah was sent to Israel, and he was a great prophet, one of the major prophets in the Bible, and it was trying to get Israel to repent and come back to God, who they had left, because they were acting like the heathen. Okay? And he said in verse 16, As for the word that thou hast spoken, would the words of Jeremiah be the words of God? Okay? Unto us, in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes. Well, that don't make it right. That doesn't make it right, period, does it? Okay, and then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. Now, will the godless world bless a person to go against God? Absolutely. And it's not that they're going against God thinking they're going against God. They're going against God because they're not getting what they want. If we're a want to people, you understand. Need and want are two different things. Okay. God will always supply your need, but he won't always supply your want, and there's a reason. If you don't get your want, it might be that it wouldn't be good for you, it might be bad, okay? God is a merciful God and a great Father, but since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. Of course, the God of this world can win against them, Okay? And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offering to her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? They are saying, when we did what you said and stopped doing what we were doing, then we began to have trouble. But if we go back and do that, we'll be all right. Now listen, folks, when he took them out of Egypt across and was heading for the the promised land you might say it's a two week journey we talked about that last week or week before but instead they begin to want to go back to Egypt for the leeks millions, onions and garlic and God was supplying them perfect food now you understand that God was supplying what they needed they wanted and it cost them 40 years in the wilderness and they died from it. And God thinned them out. And the kids got to go in. All right. Now look in Jeremiah 11. Now the question is, what do we embrace? There are some women you don't want to embrace. And I'm being crazy and saying that. No, I ain't. There is a queen of heaven, and she is the mother of harlots, and you don't want to embrace her. All right, Jeremiah 11, look with me in verse 13. For according to the number of the cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have you set up altars. You with me? God don't need altars. Set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal. Baal is a god, and he refers to as having need of a house. And, of course, that's the religious system. Have They call it God's house, and it isn't. It's the house of Baal. And in those houses are altars and vessels of sacrifice and all kinds of things, and it's called Baal worship. Okay? God never told them to set that up. Now turn to Exodus 32. Now, when Moses went up on the mountain, he was going up to deliver, when he come back, the law. Deliver. Okay? God was going to set down the law before them so that they, if they would walk in his law, they would show the world, the heathen around them, what God expected. 
and any heathen that would abide by it would come into the fellowship and the worship of God. Okay? Now you understand this. How do you expect anyone to worship God in truth when you're not worshiping in truth? That's what gets me. You cannot worship God except in spirit and in truth. And if you partake in something that's not true, you're not worshiping God. Nor are you teaching anybody else to worship God in truth. And that's exactly what happened to Israel. They began to act like the heathen. You know how? They learned the way of the heathen. Now watch. In Exodus 32... And when, verse 1, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto us, Up, make us gods which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that... What? Are you hearing what they're saying? As for the man that brought us up, well... If he brought you up, he's the man. Right? We walk not what has become of him. Well, he's up there taking care of business for you. Oh, my God, folks, I don't know how to get this over to you. There's somebody sitting at the right hand of the Father taking care of business for you. He's interceding for you. He's mediator for you. Jesus comes to visit today for next Sunday. You think he's going to put one up? Yeah, I'm a bad guy, but you're going to, you understand, I'm going to get worse. Jesus ain't going to come and put one up. And, oh, my God. Jesus is truth. And he expects truth to be the worshiper. And the only truth you're going to get is in this book. Not what man thinks or what the heart wants. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Now when they made that God, they set it up. You with me? They set it up. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15. Now, can that calf do anything? And if you want real references on that, we, we may go there and not. That's Psalm 115, folks. All right, 1 Corinthians 15. Now, what was Moses going to bring to him? Took time. He went up on the mountain. God took him up there and he hewed out two tablets and wrote the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments keep the people in line. If they'd do it, then they'd be able to teach the heathen what God expected. And if the heathen would comply to it, then God would accept them into the kingdom with them. That's just the way it is. But instead, if you change the laws or you just disregard the laws or you disregard what God said, you can't teach the heathen anything. Now watch, 1 Corinthians 50. So is Moses a deliverer? 1 Corinthians 15, 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. Did Israel lose their memory? Did when Jeremiah came to them and tried to get them to remember? What did they say? As for what you say, we will not hearken unto it. Okay. Verse 3, for I, what? I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. When Paul received the truth, what did he do with his religion? Anything associated with his religion, he counted as dung. He didn't count it dung, he said as dung. In other words, it is nothing but sin. Okay. I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to Scripture. Will that, does that save you? Yes, yes it does. 
That is the gospel of your salvation. And if you want it, bless your soul, you can have it. Now, turn to Jeremiah 10. Everybody always dreads that when I go there. But I think there's some things that have been left out of the chapter. And there's one word that has been left out. In Jeremiah 10, verse 1, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Is Israel God's people? Yes. Verse 2, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. What did God expect his people not to do? Okay. Hold there. We'll come right back. Matthew 10. Now, why did uh, God need 12 apostles? And what did the tribes, why did they need apostles? Because they had done wrong, and the apostles would show them, obviously through tongues of speaking in Acts chapter 2, they would show them what they had done wrong and get them to repent, right? Now listen, folks, why would Israel kill their Messiah? Why didn't they know what, who he was? What was the sign to them? To them? Who was he born to? Who was he born to? Yes. Why didn't they kill but, but all of that, why did they kill him? Because they didn't like what he said. He didn't praise them. Paul didn't praise people in eating the Lord's Supper. He said, do I praise you in this? I praise you not. How many of you understand why we don't do the Lord's Supper in here? Or are you just in a total bliss of darkness? How many of you understand about the tree? How many of you understand this? How many of you know what Mass is? It's the body and the blood of Christ. I thought Christmas is about the birth. You know why Israel killed the Lord? They stumbled at their stumbling block, the table. They changed the laws into traditions. And they didn't want what he had to say and what they were doing. And they killed him to get him out of the way. The God of this world, this, now I can ask you a question. How many of you will go to the, to the church, uh, Catholic church and do the Eucharist with them? Let's say it out loud. How many of you will go to the Catholic Church and do Eucharist? Now that's the... You're doing it if you're celebrating Christmas. The Mass is the sacrifice table and the altar with the body and the blood. Christ Mass. You're doing the same thing. You might as well walk into a Catholic church. Are you with me so far? And as far as what you say, we'll not hearken. Now watch. Matthew 10. Did the Israelites kill the Lord? And then the Lord said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what to do. And did they get a chance to repent through Peter? Okay, and as Peter's up there, he's been commissioned not to do something. 
He's a new nation, a little flock. Did the old flock, were they supposed to be separate and learn not the way of the heathen? This new nation, Matthew 10, look with me in verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. It never said, Don't go to the Gentiles. If it is, Cornelius can't be gone to. The way, the custom of the Gentiles. I didn't mean to make it quiet in here, but I... Trying to get you to think, folks. He said, go not into the way of the Gentiles, the custom of the Gentiles. You're a separate people. Me, You're a peculiar treasure, as Peter wrote. You're separated from, don't go into the customs of the Gentiles. The old people were in the custom of the Gentiles, and they killed my son. Don't go into the way. Don't go into their customs and act like them. You show me in the Bible where Peter and them ever celebrated the birth of Christ. And do you think they'd put a tree in their house? They're separate. Titus says that the body is a peculiar treasure. Just like Israel was, just like the new nation is, we're a peculiar treasure. We're set apart. We're supposed to teach the people around us what God expects. Not learning again. He said, be not unequally yoked together again. Are you listening? God separated the body of Christ. And the body's supposed to teach the world what ain't true and teach the truth. Go not any other way. Go back to Jeremiah. And folks, I don't want to make you mad, but bless your soul. If I could do anything in this world to keep you from facing this at the judgment, I will. In Jeremiah 10, verse 2. All right? If God has chosen the people, and he tells, verse 2, Learn not the way of the heathen. Yes or no? Has he separated them from the heathen? And he said, don't learn the way of the heathen. Right? So let's see what the heathen are doing. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Well, yeah, all you got to do is go to the newspaper. It's called the horoscopes. Now verse 3. For the customs, there's that way. The customs of the people are vain. One cutteth the tree out of the forest to work of the hands of the workman with the axe. It's easier to buy a metal one now. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as palm trees, but they speak not. They needs must be moved, bore, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also in them to do good. They can't do nothing. If you put it in your house, it's doing, hello, nothing. Be not afraid of them. Why? I ain't afraid of them, but people want to make you afraid if you don't do it. You're not worshiping Christ. <laughs> they can't do anything, folks. I'm not afraid of anything. They can't do nothing. But they probably could if it was a cedar tree. It could burn your house down. It's good for fish deals when you put them in the lake. Now watch. Verse 8. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. Hmm. Brutish and foolish. That's a curious thing. Uh, brutish is error. It's an error. It's a mistake. It's of no value. It is. How to explain it? Grace people that do it say, I don't, we're not worshiping Christ. We don't want Christ in it. We're just doing it for a holiday, whatever. <coughs> well, then I'd have to erase this name. 
wouldn't I? It, whose name is that? I'd have to get rid of that name. So we're going to have mass. What? If I, I don't want to have Christ in Christmas, you know, I, I mean, I'm just doing it because of the family and friends and relatives. It's such a beautiful time. So we need to remove that being a grace believer. Then we got what? So we're having mass. They got you. And it's a season of food and presents and drink. Offerings. Now watch. Well, who would tell them not to do it? This is what's missed in Jeremiah 10. How about verse 21? Read it out loud to me, George. Lord of mercy. Why did the word pastor show up in that verse, in that chapter? Brutish. They're foolish and errors. You don't hear anybody talk about that much, do you? You know, it's a good Christmas tree bar chapter. You know, everybody, look at that, it looks like a Christmas tree. Well, yeah, it does. Why wouldn't a pastor show you what it is and not do it or show you everything else in the Bible against everything in religion and then still do it well you got to go to a certain degree but you don't want to make anybody really mad about certain things because you take Christmas away from the people hello It has nothing to do with Christ. It has to do with Mass. That's what it's all about. Turn with me. And by the way, <clears throat> well, let's go on with me. Look with me in uh, uh, 23, verse 23. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh. To direct his steps. Now how do most men walk? They go according to the heart, don't they? Now watch. Oh Lord, correct me. Now if you're mad at Brother Jerry right now, you better listen to that. Oh Lord, correct me. But with judgment, not in thine anger. Now that's serious. Ain't you glad God ain't mad at you? Correct me in thy judgment, lest thou bring me to nothing. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 17. I just feel like it in my heart, Brother Jerry. It's okay to do it. Okay, Jeremiah 17. Verse 9, oh, my friend do it, oh, and I want to teach my kids. As for us, we will not hearken unto thee, Jeremiah. Train up a child in the way he should go when he gets old and not depart from it. Jeremiah 17, I just believe it in my heart. Verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord searcheth the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Colossians chapter 3. Folks, I do not not do Christmas because I just want to be different. It's easier to do it. And just go along with everybody. But it's another thing to do what Philippians says you do. Not only give and have to believe on him, but to suffer for his sake. What do you think that suffering is? You just don't get another car? Or you don't have all the clothes you want? Or, or you just don't have the house you want? That's your suffering. Suffering means you separate because God separated you as a saint 
and you're separated just like Israel separated. They wouldn't do it. Then the new little flock, they had to separate because they're not supposed to learn the way of the Gentiles. They're not supposed to go in the way of the Gentiles. And we are the heathen, I'm apologizing, heathen. We're the heathen. We're supposed to quit doing what we were doing. Are you listening? We're supposed to quit what we were doing for the salvation of God. Now watch. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. If you can find the verses to do it, go ahead. But what if the verses there not to do it will you make that decision or will you say I don't care what he says now here or there it shows up here you suffer for it there you're rewarded for it here you enjoy it there you lose Verse 24, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong, uh-uh, not sin, not evil. Remember, those can't do evil and they can't do good. Wrong. He that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And the end of the verse is a killer. And it don't matter whether you're a grace preacher or a grace believer. What does it say? There's no respect for persons. Okay. Look with me in Joshua chapter 7. Joshua 7. I've always went by the theology of Joshua as for me and my house we'll serve the Lord you can do whatever you want I judge no one but I will preach to you I will show you what the Lord says and then I had to go on about my business my house has none of the crap and it's very uncomforting to my wife with all the children and grandchildren I can't help that I am the bad guy. <laughs> it's okay. I will never stand before the Lord having done it. And if I do, I told you to shoot me. Jeremiah, uh, Joshua 7. Verse 1, but the children of Israel committed a trespass. In the accursed thing. Now do you have a verse in Paul's letters that said. Forgiving you of all trespasses. Observe what grace truly is. You can do whatever you jolly want to. Because of grace. But you will also answer for grace. Watch. Trespass in the accursed thing for Achan, the son of Camaro, the son of Zabedee, Zabedee, the son of whoever, the tribes of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against who? Folks, you know how many members are in the body? Many. How many bodies? People start messing in the body, it affects the whole body. Why? People say, I wish we could get out of here. Well, why don't you quit acting like the heathen and do what the body's supposed to do? Show what God's purpose is for us. And it ain't Christmas. So he took the accursed thing. Do you know what it cost in the end results? He hid it. He hid it. He put it in secret. It cost him and his family and all that he had death. Thank God for grace. Ain't got time to read that, but you read that and see. Now, look in Joshua 7, verse 15. 
And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has wrought folly in Israel. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. That is the devil's mocking you with their folly. Fa la 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 la. I ain't laughing. It's funny. I know my singing's funny. It's committing folly, and the devil loves it because it's about mass. Mm-mm-mm. Look in uh, John chapter 4. Now, is, by the way, is, do you think Christmas wrong? Is it the wrong date? Yep. So it's the wrong date. That's a lie. The wise men didn't come to the manger. That's a lie. The, uh, the wise men gave three gifts. That's a lie. The baby was in the house. That's a lie. They weren't celebrating the death and the burial and the, uh, the resurrection of Christ. He ain't dead. He's a baby. That's a lie. They have all the ornaments with a star on the top. Or an angel. That's a lie. They've got a tree that they decked with silver and gold. That has no meaning whatsoever. John chapter 4. And folks, there's a word in this verse that don't miss home. In John chapter 4 verse 24, God is a spirit. Yes, he is. And they that worship him. Next word must must worship him in spirit and in truth amen or not okay then uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 1 Corinthians chapter 3 thank God for this in grace in First John, uh, First Corinthians, chapter three, verse ten. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay that is lain, which is Jesus Christ. And now, if any man build upon that foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, and it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Do you think Christmas is going to survive the fire? No. No. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereon, he shall receive what? If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Thank God for grace. That is not the great white throne, folks. That is the judgment seat of Christ. And no matter what you do, if you've trusted the Lord, if you believe he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again the third day, and trust that and that alone, God seals you, and there ain't nothing going to separate you. But you will answer because you're his body. And his body's not to act like the heathen again. They're supposed to be separate, and touch not the unclean thing. Okay? Now watch again. Turn with me to, to uh, Romans 14. It makes for a miserable life for my wife. I know that. I don't mold well. Brother Moore said one time he was molding me for the ministry. And, she, and Kathy said, well, you're out of luck. He don't mold. And you're dear to me, and every class I go to is dear to me, and I ain't about to stand up here and make it right. And you do whatever you want, and I wouldn't walk in your house and judge you at all. 
But bless your soul, you better get it right because you're going to answer for it. And folks, if you repent and turn from it now, it's just like you never did it before. That's the nice part about God. You can just stop. And God accepts that because you were corrected. But if you never will take correction, you will be corrected. And sometimes you get corrected before you die. I told you, if I ever, ever do it, just shoot me. Just shoot me. There are some people that die early to keep from doing it. <laughs> people don't look at death that way. I do. Sometimes it's better for people to die than what they might get into. God is merciful. He is a loving, kind Father. And He loves His people. He loved the world and He gave His Son for us. He sent Paul... And Paul wrote down the 13 instructions in righteousness for us. And they are instruction in righteousness, folks. And you will never find your apostle telling you to worship the birth. You will never find him to tell you to worship the mass. He'll never tell you to put a tree up. He'll never tell you any of those things. And if you're doing them, you're doing them because you want it to out of the heart. And the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked who can know it, God know it. But God gives you a chance to be corrected. And when you get corrected, get ready. The world's coming. And when the world comes, God Almighty will make all grace abound towards you. He'll give you the measure needed to get through as you suffer. And as you suffer, he'll reward you someday thoroughly for it. Now what? Romans chapter, uh, did I tell you 14? Romans 14 verse uh, 9. For to the end as Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. I'd rather bow it right now and confess to God, I've been wrong. Correct me, O Lord. I will stand for you. And God will honor that. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. I'd do anything in the world for you, brethren. But I will not do that. You can do what you want. You on the internet, you can do whatever you want. But you will answer. And I don't care how much you fight and wrangle or try to make the scripture say what you want. It ain't right. Period. Amen. I appreciate you being here.